We're out the back of Poshu Bay and we found some koalas. Well, the time's come once again to dismantle our primary winches. We made it to our anchorage at Hoshi Bay in Maggie Island yesterday and now we're going to go off and get some fruit, get some vegetables, cheese and maybe some beer and wine. Eee, it's exciting! <laughs> also I'm going to have a shower. Like a goddy yoddy. Yeah. In front of everyone in my bathers. <laughs> Are you reading upside down? Mm -hmm. You can't read upside down? That night, we cooked the shark we caught on the way in using the free barbecue facilities. The time we spent bleeding this, mm. I think, really paid off. There's no crazy smell or anything, it's just clean, just yummy. It's like the fish and chips your grandparents used to buy for you. No evening barbecue at Horseshoe Bay would be complete without the company of half a dozen curlews, a native Australian nocturnal bird. It's not a bad one this one. Your pandanus, half rate. It's got a slight bird. They're not too bad, but in the Pacific Islands they've, they've sort of selected for ones that have less of that throat irritation and it's more just sweet. Never say die. Trees don't really care about adversity, do they? Snap not here. There are some new roots I'll play and just get going. <laughs> Check out the kookaburra. Fruit bats and butterflies, huh? So where are we off to today? Well, we're just going for a bit of a walk around the island. A good way to rest a damaged wrist is to use your legs. <laughs> so it looks like um, we've, got a, we've got a couple of k's to cover until we even start Fort Walk, but then we'll go up and see the World War II forts yep. overlooking Anchorage. seen a native pheasant or a pheasant kukul and they're normally quite shy so it was good that we got a little bit of footage of that. I'm not
not sure if you've seen all our Kimberley videos, but in one of them we come across this tree, the Kapok tree. And it's also here in Queensland, as well as in Western Australia. So you can eat those flowers as well. They don't have much flavour, but they're, they're nice. They're really beautiful. Oh, there's a few green ants on there. <gasps> Holding on for dear life as a green ant. And to prove to you that they are edible? Oh, who wouldn't believe you? Mmm. They're good. At the highest point of Magnetic Island sits the World War II anti-shipping forts and the associated camp remains of the men and women that served there. We always like to see where the kitchen is, don't we? That place was the uh, water donkey, eh? Put two big 44s in there, put a fire under it, and heat up the water. Yep. Everything that you see here was brought up the steep rocky hill with the assistance of one truck. The rest was owing to the backs of men and draft animals. Well, it wouldn't be Australia without a big yellow sign telling you how to climb a ladder. That's it. Safety first. Caution, this sign has sharp edges. <laughs> How's the view up there? Commanding. <laughs> Look at this, you've got Heinz and Julie, 1974. Should we put Troy and Pascal, 1856? <laughs> At the lookout we learned that women were often favoured for duty because of their acute hearing. Good morning. Today we're going to go and get coconuts on Radical Island that we saw yesterday. And last night we met up with Darren and Meg from SV Sarian and they're going to come and join us. They've got a YouTube channel. If you want to go check them out, I'll put the link below. And yeah, we're going to go and get a haul of coconuts. Troy's pulled out his old spikes again and the um, his harness, his iRider harness. So. Yep, we're all ready to go and get some fresh nuts. Meg and Darren's boat, Sarian, is a beautiful Bowman 47. Our mate Mick, his girlfriend Petra and their dog Kane also joined us for the coconut raid. Whilst I watched a small sailing dinghy launch from the beach, Troy wasted no time getting up a coconut palm. I was really impressed by Darren's tool for removing coconuts. No climbing required, just a good aim and a little bit of patience. All in all, not a bad haul for 20 minutes work and the spoils were divided amongst us all. When we have a big haul of coconuts, we like to cut the surrounding skin off them for ease of storage, the possibility of refrigeration, and to minimise future processing and the associated mess. Pascal, look at the smile on your face. You look so happy. Oh, he's moving. <laughs> We're out the back of Poshy Bay and we found some koalas. We found like a mama and a little baby and the little baby's like it's climbing really, on the branch. It's going for it. 
<laughs> there are several hundred koalas on Magnetic Island. They were introduced in the 1930s when the Queensland government became concerned about falling numbers on the mainland. Koala poo. It's a busy tree. Well, the time's come once again to dismantle our primary winches and give them a bit of a service. When I say service, basically what I'm going to be doing is pulling them apart, giving them an inspection and a clean, um, and just putting new lubricant on there. So, Pascal, what's the most important thing we do whenever we pull something apart? Read the manual. Oh, that's right. All right, now look, I've pulled these apart and I can do it without the manual. But a nice thing about the internet is all the knowledge of the world is at your fingertips and Harkin, who made these winches, puts out a very good manual and it's got a nice exploded diagram um, which, you know, if I have a little bit of a mental slip and I can't put it back together I can see this and it's also got all of the sequences of how, exactly how to do it. If you're new to boats and winches and sailing and things like that and you haven't serviced your winches yet and you're a little bit intimidated by it, I'm going to pull one of these apart and I'll show you that as soon as you take the top off it doesn't just explode into gears and springs and craziness. All right, It's really straightforward, it's well within your capability to do it um, and we'll just show a few tricks and dodges as we go along. All right. These Harkins, they are particularly easy to take the top off. Um, they've just got a nice big slot-headed screw in the top, machine screw in the top, um, where you know your handle goes to turn it. So that's all really nice. We can take that off pretty easily. Let's have a look. All right, screw, thread, everything's in good, good condition as I'm pulling this away. Now, all the metal parts that I have, I'm going to throw them in some diesel that I have in this tin. And that's going to get rid of the old grease. And when you get rid of the old grease, that grease hopefully will carry some of the salt away with it. All of the screws and things like that, when I look at it, I can see that this one's in fairly good condition, but it has got a little bit of corrosion on it. So with all of those things, I'm going to pop it in an acid, all right, to eat away the corrosion. My acid of choice? Well, it's vinegar. Quite a mild acid, isn't it? You can drink it. Biodegradable. Just throw it over the side when you're done. That's a plastic bit, that goes in water. So these Harkin 35s are a two speed, which means they've got a high and a lower gear, depending on which way you spin the handle. But they've also self tailing. And what that means is you can wrap the rope around it, wrap it in these spring loaded jaws, and you don't need to hold onto it. You can hang onto the boat, do other things while you just wind with the handle. And that's, it's been revolutionary really to how we sail. So this all comes off pretty easily as well. That's just a bit of um, you know, a stainless bit of kit. So I'm just going to just polish that up. I'm not going to throw that in the diesel. We might just take these screws out though. These all look pretty good. And you'll notice that even though we've been smashing to weather lots of salt water and everything else like that, these screws are coming out very easily. That's because past Troy was thinking about future Troy and he put a little bit of anti-seize on those threads. So taking the taking the rope grabbing jaws off is a fairly simple affair here. So those machine screws they look pretty good. There's a tiny little bit of dissimilar metal corrosion there. So I'll throw them in the vinegar to get rid of that. Mmm all right so here's a nice bit of stainless. I don't know whether this is 316 or 304. I'd, it might be 304 going for extra strength. But, you know, there's a little bit of very, very minor surface corrosion on that. But there's a bit of grease on there. So that goes into the diesel. Oh, there's some water in there. Yeah, a bit of seawater would have got in there. So all of that stuff. The plastic stuff. Just the plastic is going in just, fresh water just plain fresh water. There we go, so that was just sliding up these plastic bearings. 
Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Those teeth are in good condition. All right, so inside the drum winch. And Harkin have chosen to use these plastic bearings, but in other winches I've seen that they're metal um, roller bearings. These are pretty, pretty low care. So that was very straightforward to get to that stage. All right, we've just taken the winch off um, and here's the hub. Under here is where all the gearing is, so it's, it gets a little bit more complex. There's just a few um, socket head machine screws to take out. And I can see that there is this white powdery um, residue on here where two different metals have been reacting together. So let's just pull out one of these screws these machine screws and I'll show you what I mean. So you can see that, that that's, you know, it's pretty covered in a, a, a product of corrosion is what it is. So you can, you can muck around with a toothbrush and try and clean it with a metal polish or you can just drop it in vinegar and we can immediately see it starting to fizz. Yeah. Um, these ones are a bit more corroded down the bottom bit just because water can get in there and pull there and stay there. So this, these stainless steel um, screws will be reacting with, it'll be some sort of alloy, whatever this is, but it's less noble than the stainless steel. So there's a little bit of, bit of corrosion going on there. Oh, look at this. So, and that, that looks pretty bad, right? You just like, oh my God. But if we just draw a fingernail across that, that's actually discoloration in the grease, all right? We're not looking at major hardcore corrosion. There is different metals here. This looks like a, a type of bronze, I think it is, and this will be a stainless steel. You're just cleaning it. Have you got anything on the rag? Nah. So I'm just wiping the surface grease off just at the moment. I'm actually going to get my toothbrush with some vinegar and just wash up all around there. So all of these gears here are still in place. So if I want to bring a line in quickly and power is not that important, I would twist the winch handle anti-clockwise. And you can see that when I do that, these poles, okay, these little bits of metal are called poles, they jam in there and it turns and it acts directly on this drive cog. And that drive cog is what acts directly on those, okay? Those teeth intermesh with that, with those teeth there and spins our rope drum. If you go the, if you have the handle the other way, it actually, this spins because of these poles inside there. It doesn't turn them anymore. And instead it turns the bottom one. And so what that does is goes up into a gear like that, a large one and through there and turns your drive, your drive cog there. So it gears it up a bit. It goes slower, but you have mechanical advantage and so you can, what strength you're putting in actually generates, even though it's slower, more force at the actual, the drum itself. So I'll pull that out, chuck him in the diesel. And if we went ahead and have a bit of a look here, we can see that this drive um, gear also has these poles. If you're going to lose anything out of a winch, it's going to be the little springs that keep these, that make these poles work. All right. Good. Chuck that in there and throw that in there. Now the nice thing about these Harkins is that little um, that little spring that makes those poles jump back out. It's in its own little groove in the boss of this gear, and just by flicking it up and very very carefully, woo, there it goes. Look at that, and that is the pole spring. Now when you have a look at it, you'll notice that one of the arms is bent and comes out and one of it comes straight off the spring. On this, it goes like this, all right? That straight arm goes on the pole like that and the bent part is what operates against this body. Don't get that wrong. That's, some, that's what you need to take note of when you're pulling apart a winch. That is the one that I've seen cause confusion with deckies a lot of times. <laughs> it's like, oh, which way do these springs go back in? So just pay attention when you pull it apart. 
And look, we'll, we'll pull this other one out now. So once I got that out of the groove, then I can manipulate that pawl, and that's spelled P-A-W-L, mm -hmm. out. Okay, and we see as it's come out, that that spring that operates at the body is the bent one, okay? Which is the same shape as the pawl, goes in it like that. Oh, so the bent one sticks out. So, yep, yeah, so to repeat, it doesn't go like that, like it looks like it should. Mm. That's a real source of confusion for people that are new to winch cleaning. Okay, so we've pulled the screws out of the vinegar and I'm just gonna use it, as I said, just to get rid of that, that those corrosion products off his cast body. So one of your best friends when you're dealing with any, any of this stuff is plenty of rags and some nice, good quality uh, wet and dry paper. All right, so that um, that diesel's done a really good job of removing all that old grease. And now it's up to me to remove as much of that diesel as I can before putting fresh new grease on. When you're making a selection for your rags, for your engine room and uh, for just general whatever, anything that you're going to operate, any machinery, winches, whatever, when you get your rags, you want ones that don't leave any lint behind. So these ones are pretty good quality bed sheets. Um, some organisations that clean for hospitals and hotels, they will sell big bags of sheets and they are great rags. Something like this isn't too bad um, when it finally goes the way of all flesh. I might turn it into a rag, but even it, it's got a bit of a bit of fluff to it, a little bit of lint. So I probably wouldn't use this for a rag for doing something like this or particularly around an engine. But these old bed sheets with a fairly high thread count. 1200. Whoa, 1200, that's a, that's a hell of a rag. All right, so that's really good. And they won't leave anything behind. Sides of the poles, they've got a bit of a, a patina on them. See that? So I've just, um, just very lightly, a touch of diesel. Just, just with the weight of the pool itself, hardly anything. Just give it a bit of a clean. Just so that when it's in it's when it's in there, it's absolutely smooth. There's nothing to sort of bite or jam or you know try and fight with the spring. It pays to have a little bit of time in your hands when you're doing this, just so you're not rushing. And it also pays to do this job not when you're out at some isolated reef or coral atoll, okay? Because if you're going through this and you discover, oh, hang on, gee, I'm missing a tooth there, or you pull one of those springs and whoop, over the side, you probably want to be near somewhere where you can um, get a spare. And you should really have spares of those springs. Even all of this other heavy, well-machined stuff, without those springs, it doesn't work. That is the weak link of your uh, your deck winches. Everything is shiny and sparkly. Shiny and sparkling is you know, pretty important. Um, and the main reason we want everything shiny and sparkly is because it's clean and that means we can see that there's no deformed teeth, there's no missing teeth, there's no cracks, anything like that. So we can start reassembling it. I'm just putting, um, I'm just putting lanolin grease, actually, lanotec. I like using this stuff. It's pretty good lubricant. It's not toxic, it's biodegradable. Um, it does a really good job. I've been using it for ages, so. Straight be... from the sheep's bum. Yeah. The, uh, the Harkin people recommend that you use Harkin grease, of course, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll, see, um, we'll see how we go using, using Lanatec. Now, when, you, when you're slopping grease around with uh, careless abandon, you do want to be careful not to put it on the pole springs, all right? That is one recommendation that you can definitely pay attention to. The only thing that goes on poles is light machine oil. So I've got this Singer sewing machine oil for that. And there we go, that's what, those poles are silky smooth now. So that is, that's exactly what we want. See how they, they yeah, spring back beautifully. beautiful. Even I'm getting excited about that. Oh, look how smooth that is. Hey. Oh. 
And so, you know, when the other one's on there, it'll drive it like that. So on the teeth of any of those gears, that's where we want to put our grease. So we don't want to go too crazy with it when we're putting it on. Duralac. Duralac. I actually prefer another product called uh, Tef Gel. It's not quite as messy, the applicator's better. Haven't we got Tef Gel? Didn't we get it from the bolt store? We've got Tef Gel. Um, I just want to I just want to use this though, because I do yeah. have it. And it's just like a, I got miles of it. <laughs> so what's this called? This is an anti-corrosive jointing compound. And that's another nice thing that you should have on your boat because dissimilar metals, the least noble one, all right, one of them is going to act as a cathode and one will act as a anode. Yeah, so by putting this, um, by putting this Duralac on there, what it's actually doing is isolating the two metals electrically, okay? No electrons can swap back and forward. Can't carry material from one metal to the other and cause galvanic corrosion. Okay, so there's six fasteners. What we're going to do is tighten it by skipping one. So we'll tighten one, skip one, tighten the next one, skip another one, tighten that one. And then we'll, so we're actually, it'll be a Star of David if you like. There's a triangle there, and we'll tighten it in a triangle, and then we'll go back and we'll tighten that in a triangle. We'll get them all about the same, and then we'll go around the world and tighten it. And that's that brings everything down evenly, and then tightens it. Hear those paws, but immediate lock. So there's no loss on that winch. Beautiful, and that's those paws grabbing hold of it, not letting it go backwards. Fine. That that white dot, I just used the paint marker just as a reference point, so I'd know when I'm reassembling it next time where exactly that little tail is going to come out. Let's tighten that up. Last little bit here. The last screw. Oh, you've got a little bit more Durac yet. Duralac. Just the, the tiniest little scarric. Yeah, don't grab it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this would be an awkward one to drop, actually. Mr. Shane. Mr. Shane. Just a little uh, hat tip to, to Shugzi. Uh, he told us that once you've polished up stainless steel, if you give it a quick hit with Mr. Sheen, which is a silicon based furniture polish, it keeps stainless steel from uh, from salt marking, from getting marked by salt that's on it. Makes it very easy to clean. And I've found that that is the case. So there you go. There we go, Pascal. We've got. Oh, it's sparkling. It's sounding Ooh, amazing. They do sound really great. Nice, positive, you know, non reversal. Mm, exactly. So our pools are just leaping into action. Mm. So you can see that spins really quickly, really slowly. Yeah. Two speed. Oh, see how easy that came out. Ah. <laughs> it's because I cleaned all the cheese out of there. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. It's not a step-by-step instruction of how to do your winch all right the step-by-step -step instruction is in your manual but that um, should show you how easy it is gives you some uh, grounding and the way two-speed winches sort of work introduces you to vinegar as a good way of getting corrosion off metal um, 
and just uh, yeah just hopefully it just gives you the confidence to you know to get in pull those winches off you've seen that the main thing you've got to look out for is your pawl springs they can pop and go overboard so just be careful when you're pulling your pawls out of the those bosses of the gears um, and it's probably a good idea to have some spare pawl springs on your boat um, and if they're new winches you probably don't need many more spares than just the springs but as your winches get on in years, it probably actually uh, would pay to have a set of pawls as well. But that's it. Maintenance. It's a good thing. Thank you for tuning into Free Range Sailing. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as it really helps get our video out to more viewers. If you'd like to keep track of us in real time, there is links in the description to our Facebook and Instagram page as well as loads of other great information that you might find useful.